Hello, welcome to this marvellous designer tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to make a kind of corset dress, uh, some kind of Edwardian style, uh, maybe you know even Wild West or you know steampunk, something you could adapt to go yeah either way. So let's get an avatar in here first. So let's go there. We we'll have the female V2. Let's pick one out, and there we go. Okay, so what we need is uh, some pattern pieces, and we want uh, multiple sections going around the body to build up the panels that you have in a corset. Now, I understand, you know, there's probably multiple different ways of doing it. Uh, but I'm going to basically have uh, one narrow one down the front and then another one on the front and then one around the side. So I'll probably end up with five or six pieces. So let's uh, go to our rectangle tool to start with. Just going to start with the rectangles and then we'll adjust them. And I'm going to draw something down somewhere down the middle of a body there. There we go. And then I will duplicate that with a right click and a copy and pop it next to it whoops I didn't mean a mirror paste there we go and of course you know as these move around the body they're going to change in size and shape so if I paste that again control V and pop that there and I might actually decide that this should go down a little way Probably a little more than that one, which probably means that this one, this point rather, wants to come down to match it. So I'm just building a rough shape at the minute. You know, we'll put the curves and the uh, the shaping into it as we go. Um, but to start with, I'm just going to get the basic shape going. So that's there. So Control C, Control V. No right click uh, copy where's copy gone and right click paste not mirror paste John stop doing that and one there and one more with the control V to pop it there okay so I think I've got enough panels now so I'm going to move that down and out of the way uh, sorry I didn't mean it there I meant it there <laughs> and then shift F uh, for foxtrot and I'm going to start to arrange these patterns so this one I'm probably going to want in the middle this one I'm going to want there this one there and so on and so forth until I get to the back there we go and now we can sew these together so the segment sewing tool sew those in there, that one to there, to there and to there. Let's turn these segments off, shift F and have a look see what we've got. I'm just going to grab these and move them down a little and I'm going to grab these two and move them over a little. So they should be a little bit more central okay so what I want to do now is copy these to the other side so if I select all of those and right click and symmetric pattern with sewing and then pop it to one side it will add it to the other side of our uh, avatar and now I can sew up the front and sew up the back there we go now these are a little far away at the moment so I'm going to select these click on them and then just move them inwards the closer they are to the model the better you know if, if they're too far away it takes too long for them to come together and they build up momentum and have a tendency to clash and push each other around which is you know not helpful so let's press space and see what we've got uh, we've got a pretty baggy <laughs> not very fitting uh, piece and that's just because you know some of our pieces are too big and some of them uh, need a bit of a, a bit more adjustment than that. Okay, so let's do a little bit of that now. So these two side pieces, for example, I suspect are too big. So I'm going to double click on the middle one and then just scale them down till they're 
a little bit smaller and here we go we start to get to where we want to be the front's not too bad just pulling it up to um, get it right or get it somewhere right and yes the back ones I think I've probably been a bit generous with those as well so double click on the middle one I'm just going to make them a little smaller and space and a little smaller and space okay so that's not bad it's starting to come right uh, the materials wrong you know we want to uh, have a stiffer material than this uh, so in the next one what we'll do is add in a stiffer material so that you know um, we're not looking at this garment as if it were made out of some sort of really lightweight cotton which is never going to fit <laughs> properly as a corset uh, we want something a little heavier uh, that will maintain shape and not wrinkle so much okay so i will talk to you then okay so let's uh, select our fabric up here and we'll bring up the fabric properties now down here we have a custom set and it if I change this to full grain leather, you'll see it instantly becomes much stiffer, much tighter, much less wrinkly, uh, which is kind of what you want for a corset really. But full grain leather might be a little over the top here. Uh, so perhaps we could find something else. So let's select fabric again. And uh, I think one of the silks, uh, I don't know <laughs> which of these are heavy and which aren't. So let's try organza and that's not too bad it's a little bit floppy um, let's try something else uh, double go get again it's not it's better but it's not perfect uh, and that might be because well the patterns are frankly not quite right mm. okay so basically select around until you you find the one you want um, and then it's a question of adjusting uh, your pattern pieces to you know to fit to it uh, I think for here I might want to bring this back panel down it's wrinkling kind of in this direction so you know the wrinkles are, are appearing left to right and that kind of a, indicates to me that there's too much material top to bottom so if I go to here and grab these points and bring them down I will remove material and then it should actually stop to crinkle so much but it might change the fit so much that you know it's not really worth it so I'm going to undo that because I think I preferred it before in fact yep yeah, there we go right Oh, I'm making a right hole looks of this. There we go. Okay, so I don't think that fabric is going to work for me. I'm going to go for uh, something else. Let's go to a fusible rigid. No, still not. Yeah, I'm back to my leather again. There we go. At least that gets me what I want. I mean, I'm not trying to bake this. I'm not, I'm not trying to make build it as a garment I'm trying to build it as a, a 3d asset so basically I'll use any shortcut to you know to get it right I, I you know I'm not a dressmaker uh, I just make the tool work uh, for what I want if I hope that makes sense some sort of sense anyway okay so there we go um, next then I want to sort of shape the top because the top's not right you know that's uh, need some smoothing off um, and then we'll go on to creating like a, a waist part or a belt part to attach the skirt to uh, so I will talk to you then okay then next then I'll smooth off the shape around the top of the bodice and to do that I'm first going to align some of these patterns so if I select two lines that I want to um, match up I right click and match up and then to center and 
providing they're the same size you know the top and the bottom will match up and I'll do the same for here Oops, I've got my shift button held down and let's match up those there we go and now I can control the curve going around here so first of all I'm going to put a curve in this side piece just like that let me think about it there we go and now I want to match that at the top a little there we go and then I want this to match also so I'm probably going to have to reduce the size of most of my patterns here because to match those I'm gonna to have to move this point down if I move this point down it will no longer match all these points so I'm going to move them all down. I don't know why that one didn't move. There we go. It's quite low at the back now. And then we can go back to our curve tool. And in here I can put a little curve in to smooth that out. I think that might be perhaps a little much. Let's pull this up a little bit. No, it's okay. Good stuff right so that's that pretty much done except to say that I want to make sure that my uh, line at the middle just meets up I don't want it there to be a little curve in there so I'm going to grab this middle point and move it upwards and then grab the curve handle to flatten that out there we go that's what I'm looking for okay so that's good that seems to all be uh, fitting nicely or sitting nicely on the model at least and then uh, next we'll add in the uh, the belt piece um, or the, the bit that's going to attach the skirt to the dress itself okay so I shall talk to you then okay so this belt I want in uh, a single piece and I want to find out how big that needs to be so whoops I moved some of there if I select all of these lines down the bottom over in my properties it will tell me the 2d line length and it will tell me the 2d line length plus any symmetric uh, patterns so 651.2 so I'm going to go to the rectangle tool and click in the viewport and type 651.2 and a height of say 30. I like to give it a generous height um, because we're working with geometry here and you know at this point we have quite a low uh, geometry resolution. If I uh, were to make it too thin it's going to be a single um, polygon deep and you know that's not necessarily a good thing. So let's click OK so this piece here needs to sew up to all of these pieces and we can do that with the sewing tool let me just press space whoops no let me just move that up rather okay so i'm going to wrap this using the arrangement points so shift and f and i'll use this point here or perhaps this point here to do that so now i can see that this piece needs to attach to here let's go shift F and this piece needs to attach to here so this end is here this is the back piece it corresponds to so what we're going to do is use N to M or M to N sewing M to N segment sewing M to N yes so if I click here I'm saying I want to sew this whole area and you press enter and then you can point at all of the edges you want to sew that to and all the way around I might have some of these backwards I think I'm having a moment and when you're finished press enter again and it will set them all up now it's useful here I think to freeze this top piece so right click and freeze and then press space and it will sew up to it 
and then we just need to sew the end together which we use the standard segment sewing for there we go and press space and now I can select everything right click on a frozen piece and unfreeze and that sorts it out lovely so now we've got a, a kind of a belt waisty piece uh, that we can attach a skirt to or in our case we're going to do two skirts um, so we'll start that in the next section and I'll talk to you then okay so our skirt then so I want to know how big this is to match the size so it's 651.2 and then I'm going to create a circle so we'll create an ellipse rather and click and it was 651.2 so let's go to circumference and 651.2 oops that's zero and click OK um, this is our inner hole so actually it's no good to me except as a starting point so I want to select all of the outer pieces for that and right click and offset as uh, pattern outline make sure the create line is ticked and give it a value and let's make it 40 40 is that enough doesn't seem like a lot does it no it's nowhere near enough <laughs> let's make it 200 there we go and click OK and then we can double click on the internal line and right click and convert to whole now I'm just going to try and arrange it roughly where it's going to be to establish where the front is so that's the front and that's the back so let me move this down a little bit <coughs> so because this is the back and our belt piece is kind of joined at the back I want to sew from the back to the back so let us go to our free sew tool and click on the back and go around to the front or around the front and to the back again and then I'm going to do the same for the belt piece now I may have got these reversed it's not unheard of uh, I'm just going to move this so I can see no I don't have it reversed if you do have it reversed then edit sewing select the line right click and reverse and that's what reversed looks like there we go reverse that back again okay so I'm just going to freeze the belt so it doesn't get pulled around and then press space and that should settle down now you'll notice <laughs> because we've just created this on a default fabric uh, it does look much like a skirt well not any skirt um, that you'd wear outside of the house I don't think um, so I'm going to create a new fabric and call it skirt and whoops that's got me caps lock on and I'll rename the top one to corset or bodice or whatever uh, as long as I know what it is whoops just knock my can over and then for the second piece let's turn the sim off I'm just going to drag and drop that down to there and then we'll update its properties so this time we do want a softer material uh, so let's go to a silk uh, let's try the double and see what happens there we go okay so that drops down it's, it's not long enough uh, which is not a problem uh, all we need to do is double click on the outside of the skirt right click offset as pattern outline uh, I don't want the internal line this time uh, I don't want quite want it 200, perhaps 100, and then click OK, and then press space and let it settle. There we go. So that's kind of one skirt, uh, but we want two on this. So what we're going to do in the next one is create an overskirt, and then we're going to gather it up. So I will talk to you then. okay so we need a second pattern for this so I'm gonna right click on here 
and copy and right click and paste and I'm going to paste it over itself because that puts it perfectly in 3D space I'm just going to move it off to one side so I know which one it is and then I don't want to sew it to the same line I find that if you sew it to the same line you have a tendency to get interference where all those three polygons kind of come together so I'm going to create an additional line on our belt piece so if I right click on there and offset as internal line uh, we'll make it 10 maybe 15 there we go and click OK and now we need to sew it so let's uh, go to our free sewing tool and again I'm going to start at the back go around the front and to the back again and then I'm going to whoops that's the wrong point typical so start at the back around the front and back to the first point again and then on the belt I want to select my internal line there we go and now if I press space it will go nuts it's just itself sorting it out basically you can get over that a little bit just pressed under I just pressed undo there uh, by temporarily setting your layer to one and that will mean that it tells the program that <coughs> this layer should be on top and then it won't kind of fight quite so much so let's press the space bar again and as you can see it didn't fight quite as much as it did the first time around okay so that's our overskirt and I'm not sure my material is correct so I'm going to change my uh, thing to organza there that's a little bit more like it I think it's a little bit less um, creased that's the word I was looking for um, so what I want to do now is actually attach sort of the bottom on one side up to here to bring it up and form a, a kind of a, a drape in the front uh, so we will have a look at that in the next section okay so this bit is a little bit tricky uh, I won't dress it up um, <clears throat> when you start having loads of clothes and things interacting with them you, know, you can get some issues so what we're going to do is try and get around those issues by doing things in a, some sort of order now I want to have a little strap up here which attaches underneath this skirt and pulls everything up and if I try and do that in one step just have it do it it's not going to work uh, so what I'm going to do is actually initially I'm going to create a couple of internal lines on the skirt whoops not there uh, so somewhere around there I'll pop an internal line and then I'm going to select that internal line and copy and paste it and put it somewhere near the hem not right on the hem just about there I think and then we'll use the segment sewing tool to bring those together and as you can see that pulls it up and if I pull this down or the, the bottom skirt down um, you can see that this is kind of pulling itself up independently and we can tease it around and we can move things about um, but the material on this is too stiff um, to do what we want it to so I'm just going to change this for a moment uh, perhaps do well, let's try a chiffon that's a bit more relaxed and actually uh, la, la, la. it would help if I really knew what all these were like what were heavy and what weren't but I don't so <laughs> let's go back to just use a default so I'm just going to go up the top and go for default there we go and let's see it relaxing now and what I want is to now add a line here on the bodice and attach a, a strap to our bottom line here now that's easier said than done so let's go and have a look so I want it somewhere around there so that's on this piece and if I draw a little internal line here just about the same size as we had initially <coughs> 
then I can create a rectangle pattern uh, to attach to it. Now this I want to be stiff so I'm going to select the bodice material and draw that out down there. There we go. And then we can sew it to itself or sew it together rather. So I want to sew the bodice to the top and I want to sew the bottom uh, piece to the bottom piece of our uh, or the bottom part on our skirt. And I'm going to grab this and move it up and get it somewhere in the right kind of area. There we go. Now again this is a temporary measure but I'm going to put this to layer 3 so it tries to stay on top of everything and then I'll let it sim. <coughs> and it's nearly there but what's preventing us or preventing this from being slightly more natural is the fact that we've still got our sew line here which was just a case of getting it close. So I was going to delete that and then press space and that should relax down. And now we've got a strap which is grabbing our skirt. It's not going underneath and you know frankly I, I would like it to go underneath but I don't think I'm going to be going to make it do it. Uh, so if I want this to go higher I can grab this bottom piece whoops if I get close enough and just move it up a little bit whoops now I've got the whole thing now yeah I use shift to constrain it and then I can start to bring it up there we go so all that's left to do really is replicate that on the other side and uh, I will do that in the next little section uh, but in the meantime uh, well no actually I'll, <laughs> I'll replicate it between sections and then I'm going to add a, a little bit in here to give us some detail uh, which will make it look a little bit more uh, coherent and believable so I will talk to you then okay so now I want to extend this little strap piece a little bit. So let's uh, go over here. I'm just going to move both my pieces down the bottom. And what I want is a, a block on top of it and a block underneath it. So we'll select both pieces. Well, yes, we'll select both pieces and just move these around. I need a bit more space. And I'm going to copy and paste them so it's right click copy right click paste whoops not mirror paste just to paste and I'll put it above and then double click in the middle and I'll shrink those down to about where I want them to be so now I want to attach that to the bodice itself so let's do that and we'll need an internal line I'll have an internal line just above our original and then we'll sew each to each so edit sewing not edit sewing segment sewing so I'll do that one to that one and that one to that one and let them sew together just to give some sort of illusion that it's actually going to be tied to the bodice in some way and we can put some stitching in there to further reinforce that similarly we do the bottom let's turn the sim off uh, so I can copy these and paste them this time I want them underneath and we'll need an extra couple of lines on our skirt so I'll double click on that one control C control V just move it a little bit down might need to adjust these a little bit and then we can sew our pieces up. So it'd be helpful if I could find them. Uh, so let's select them. <laughs> no chance. Okay, let me select the skirt. Let's actually be in selection mode first. Right click and we'll hide that pattern. Perhaps hide this one as well. And somewhere along the lines. We should find these. <laughs> I think they're probably uh, inserted somewhere uh, where the sun probably doesn't shine inside a body somewhere. 
Uh, so let's just deactivate her uh, with the show avatar. Ah, there they are. Look. Okay, so let's move that up there and let's move that up there. And then we can sew these together. So let's use our sew tool. So I want to sew here to here. And this one needs to go onto the skirt if I can figure out where the skirt is. It's there. To there. And this one to this one. Now I'm pretty confident I've got one of those wrong in terms of its uh, orientation. No, it looks alright. Okay. Actually, I can't tell whether it's alright or not because I can't see the, sir, the, sh the skirt. So, uh, right click and show all patterns. And let's grab that and move it above. That one's alright. I'll grab this one and move it above that one. I'm not sure. No, I think it's alright. No, it's definitely not alright. Okay, let's delete it. So if I select that one and delete, I think I've saved the top to the bottom. So that should be the bottom. There we go. And it's the right way around. Excellent. And press space and let that sim. And that helps a lot, I think. Okay, so to further make it uh, more interesting, I'm going to add a button fastener to it, to this piece down the bottom. So let's go to the button tool and select the button. And I want to put a button on each of our bottom pieces here in the middle somewhere. So let's pop those in there. And then I'll go over to the button editor, go to default button to get the properties up. And I'll change this button style to something just, just a bit more rounded. Perhaps not quite that rounded. That one there. I'm not sure that's a different one. Okay, so if you're um, you know, if it's too rounded for you, let me cancel that. Uh, we can actually change some of the properties of the button in terms of its size. So its thickness is 15mm at the minute. If I put that down to 8, it should halve the size. And that will give us a much better look. Okay, so sim running, yes. So that's kind of that skirt part. And of course, you know, if you want to do uh, more of those, if you want to put one at the back or, you know, do anything, you're more than welcome to do so. But I won't uh, bore you by making me or making you watch me do it. Um, so, OK. So we need some further detailing on this uh, because we want to, you know, have it looking really nice. So we're going to start to do that in the next couple of sections. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so let's add a bit of top trim to this. So I've just selected all of our, my edges across the top. There we go. I'm going to right click and offset as pattern outline. And 100 millimeters. That doesn't look like 100 millimeters. Let's cancel that. Let's try again. Right click, offset as pattern outline. That's what I want. Still doesn't look like 100 millimeters. <laughs> Uh, let's make it 200. There's 100 millimeters just so far that I, I can't see it. I only want it to be about maybe 50. No, 50 is too much. It's 20. Okay, so uh, I need my create internal line here, but I also want um, my lines not to uh, be too far out. So let's check this to, there we go. That's what I want. I want to extend, not perpendicular. Because perpendicular is going to expand them out. And we want them to say pretty straight. OK, I might cut this down later. Uh, but for the moment, we'll go with that. 
and then we'll select all of these and right click and cut and sew now I can start joining them together just moving these out of the way so I can see each end properly and then we'll get to our segment sew tool and just start to sew these up there we go and now I need to sew the front together and the back and there we go so that adds a nice little trim across the top whoops there we go oh come on more fingers today uh, actually I don't <laughs> I didn't really need to sew those up what I actually want to do is just merge them I, I want one piece not multiple pieces so let's do that now merge where's merge got it's there I think I'd know if I'd only just used it wouldn't you and merge there we go and I can even merge these front bits together if I wanted to but I want to actually maintain a, a line down the middle because I want there to be kind of uh, a, you know something joining this together okay so let's get our avatar back that would be shift A and now we can see what we're doing if it's too long for you you can always select all of one end or one line right click oops don't know what I did there right click and offset as internal line say 10 millimeters to halve it and click OK why didn't that first one select that's nuts let's do that again right click offset as internal line there we go that's done it and OK then I can select that internal line and cut it and simply delete the bit I don't want there we go and the other side there so now we've put a little trim up top uh, but I want to make it a little bit more uh, visible uh, a little bit thicker a bit more realistic so I'm going to select these two and then right click and layer clone over and I'll just pop those into the um, into the view and then press space now that adds a certain thickness uh, but it doesn't really do everything we want to do so first of all I want to select the inner pieces and in the 3d view right click on them and reverse our normal flip normal so that gives them a, uh, a different direction uh, so that if we're looking at it from this side we'll see that <coughs> but we also need to kind of uh, add some geometry here so that it can bend and we'll do that on the outside ones so let me just move those up a little bit and what I want to do is select my outside line I'm going to right click on it and offset as internal line uh, but this time on a very low number say one millimeter and perhaps two uh, in the number of offsets and click OK and I'll do the same for uh, the bottom line and this will give it more geometry on one line than the other so they won't lay flat against each other they will actually you know uh, have enough geometry to come apart uh, so offset as internal line uh, one millimeter uh, two iterations and then if I press space now uh, it might have a fit it's gonna have a fit oh my goodness it's had such a fit <laughs> let me undo one of those and press space that seems happy okay let me select these top two I suspect what's happening is that um, the extra geometry is flipping not flipping but intersecting with the the panel below and it doesn't know which way to go and it is having the same effect okay so let me press 
space and control Z to undo a few times. There we go. And just make sure I've got these top ones selected. Hmm. Okay, so what we can do now is add some collision offset. So you see, add the thickness collision. If I increase that to say five and press space, it's going to add a little bit of distance between the two panels. Um, in here, you may see it, uh, but once you export this, you won't. It will weld up. So that's good. Okay. So let's do this bottom line again. And right click offset as internal line. One millimeter, two uh, spots. There we go. And press space. And fingers crossed it won't go nuts. It is going nuts. Why is it going nuts? Is it just settling down? Okay. Well, here's the cheat. If I select these top pieces, I'm going to uh, deactivate them. So deactivate pattern and sewing and let it settle. Ah, I see exactly what's the problem. <laughs> see, it's on the bottom as well. Uh, so they're kind of mirrored, uh, mirror patterns. So let me take that off and control Z, control Z. And if I now select on the bottom piece, I don't want to select on the pattern. I want to select on the pattern. Sorry, I don't want to select the lines, I want to select on the pattern. Uh, so remove link to editing. And the same on this one. Right click, remove link to editing. There we go. Now I can double click on these internal lines and get rid of them. some reason that internal line on the underlying piece was uh, causing it some grief. There we go. Press space, that should be good. Okay, that's come as where it should be. So I'm going to right click on that and freeze it. And then for the other patterns that we deactivated I don't think I've removed linked editing from this. Something's not right. <laughs> um, let's select them all. So you've got one with the internal lines on and the other ones don't. So I want to uh, right click and remove linked editing from all of them. And then hopefully I shall be able to put these additional lines in here. Offset as internal line go. Just going to check the other patterns, make sure it's not doing anything crazy. There we go. Come on, select. I think I moved that. I did. Sorry, I'm having a right old day today, aren't I? Right click and offset as internal line. There we go. So these pieces, if I can select them, Oh my goodness, I'm having a proper day of it. I didn't manage to select that one for some reason. Did that earlier. I don't know what it is. Might be something to do with the pattern, perhaps. We'll see. Uh, offset is internal line. One millimeter. There we go. And it's gone all the way this time. So these ones should, at the moment, be inactive. So I'm going to right click on them and make them active again and then press space to bring them back out. And because I've frozen the underlying piece, it's going to have time to get to where it needs to get and settle down, which it's kind of doing, uh, but not really. Uh, so I think it's okay in some places, but there are some other places it's not very happy. So at this point in time, because I think essentially, and I mentioned it earlier, my patterns are too... Um, my resolution is too uh, low, so I'm going to take that down to a 5 and hit space. And now it seems far, far happier. 
yes something to look out for so let me select those two and activate those as well or unfreeze them and I'll let it sim and with any luck it will work there we go it's going so sorry about that that's uh, a proper pain uh, but these are some of the things that happen some of the things that give you grief you know when you're making things um, you know when you're working with those very thin patterns you know there's just not enough geometry in them um, and when they try and work out where they need to be when you've only got like one vertex here and one vertex here and with no nowhere to kind of move um, they move very small amounts but never really get far enough away from each other to separate um, so you have a tendency to get those horrible uh, little jaggedy bits that don't uh, fit in okay so I hope that was uh, was useful to you um, in the next bit we'll start to add a few more uh, of those kind of details uh, I think we might add some stays up and down uh, these corset panels um, and then we'll see where we go from there so I'll talk to you then okay so let's put some stays down uh, these panels and this is the same for each of these panels but uh, I'll just do the one and then uh, I'll do the others between so if I select this line here I can right click offset as internal line and what do we do we'll give it about 10 millimeters I think uh, maybe 15 to be on this no, 15 is too much perhaps 12 and then uh, I only want one so I'll take the number of offsets down make sure extend is on and click OK and now I want to add a point at the top and the bottom of this line so right click on it extend to trim and add point to pattern outline now I've got a point here or a, a line here a line here a line here and a line here so with those selected I can go to my pattern tools and trace and then right click on those lines and trace as pattern and that will bring it out and give me a copy seems I didn't have enough selected there so let me reselect that Let's edit pattern I might need that one and that one selected too just to complete it what I'm trying to do is tell it what I want and you know as long as I don't have everything selected it's not going to just recreate the pattern I just need enough lines to define what I want so I right click uh, not right click sorry I will go to trace and then right click and trace this pattern and now when I move this off to one side it's still not right excellent <laughs> I'm having a right mare today right let's try that one more time so that works perhaps this line doesn't quite extend up so let me select this and just make sure we'll extend to trim pattern outline is there right click no come on John trace right click trace as pattern and there we go I've managed it this time I think the line there was just a little gap so it wasn't quite defining properly so we'll go back to that tool there I'm just going to put this between these two let's have a bit of a rearrange okay <coughs> so this I want to then sew back uh, but before I do that I'm going to give it a one on my pattern and we're also going to accommodate for uh, the geometry being very close together uh, and we'll do that Whoops. if I find the right tool on the edit pattern tool I'll double click select everything and then I'll offset as internal line just one millimeter and one offset there we go okay so we can sew it together now so onto our segment sewing tool so the long pieces and the short together 
and one last thing so I don't forget from last time I don't just having to think just want to select the pattern and reduce the particle distance down so now I can right click on here in the uh, 3D view and superimpose over and it will uh, use the sewing that we've done to define where that goes and I'll give it a little extra thickness in collision and press space and that should do the job uh, so it's a uh, yeah it's a little unhappy with me let me whoops, undo until that stops uh, I found that you know this is generally down to particle size and collisions and all sorts of things so let's take that down to three and often it can be how you've actually sewn it whoops cancel that uh, so I'm gonna delete one seam and let it sim and that should settle down a bit and I'm going to put the seam back in but I'm going to sew it to a different piece so I'm going to sew it from here to here and then press space there we go now I can see that actually my problem is the fact that it's going right to the edge do you see that where it's fighting itself so let's stop that sim and undo now I'm going to cut a bit of this off because because it's going right to the edge it's interfering with the trim above it uh, we might be able to get around that if we change this to a new pattern layer uh, above the trim one let's set it to two and press space but actually I don't think so I think it's just too close and you know it's a bit of a pain but we can compromise to make that work so first of all I'm gonna select my top piece here right click and whoops I'll select these inner lines first I need to get rid of those let's press space see if that helps it doesn't really so I'm gonna offset this as an internal line by maybe two millimeters to be safe and I'll click extend to make sure it goes out and I'll do the same here uh, convert no not convert to curve point um, oh goodness I keep grabbing the handle offset the internal lines at two millimeters and then for this one I need to extend and add a point to pattern outline and then I should be able to just delete that top piece so now this is shorter and needs to sew to a different spot and this line I just need to bring back so it's on that internal line so back to my sewing edit sewing this seam is no longer required now I want the seam to be just below it there we go and it relaxes and chills out which is perfect it's not ideal I would like it to go right to the top uh, but frankly sometimes it just doesn't work and you know I, I think it's still a better tool you know marvelous signs are a better tool for this thing than you know doing it by hand but you know uh, horses for courses you know some people prefer it some people don't and yeah so saying that uh, I need to do that all around uh, the corset piece to give us the, all that detail so I'll do those in between videos and then we'll come back and uh, I'm going to add uh, a little bit more detail so I shall talk to you then okay so let's uh, pop some ties across the front so I'm going to use uh, some strips and buttons so we'll start off with a button and I'm going to pop that somewhere around there let it catch up, there we go so that's got some ambient with it, that's nice and now I want to copy it so I'll go to the button editor or the button uh, 
select option go select my button whoops in the 2d view and just zoom in and now I'm going to go control C and control V but before I drop it down I'm going to get to the right place place and then I'm going to right click and it's going to ask me how many I want so I'm just going to increase this and perhaps adjust the distance a little bit because I want to bring that bottom button up a little there we go <coughs> so I can do the same thing on the other side uh, but this time what I'm going to do is select all my buttons and copy uh, control C and control V and I use shift to keep them aligned and pop those on the other side there we go now we've got some sort of uh, buttons fastened together but what I want to do is actually put something between them um, and you know uh, all we need to do is add in some some strips uh, we may need to actually reach <laughs> redo our buttons uh, but at least this gives me an idea of uh, where and what I want to do so let's draw a little strip and I'm going to draw it right across like that there we go and then I'll pop that up into place and now I need to be able to fasten it to uh, the buttons so for that we can add a little piece I might need to make this just a little bigger for the moment so let's pop that up there and pop that in there there we go let's make it a little wider as well just to give ourselves a chance okay so now on the button tool what I want is the button hole I'm going to put a button hole on that side and a button hole on this side uh, and now we can fasten the buttons to the buttonholes so let's move this out of the way so I can see everything I want and on the button tool if I can find it, it's here somewhere, it's right in front of my face there it is, we can fasten button so I want that button to fasten to that hole and that button to fasten to that hole and now if I come out of that tool press space you'll see it should work it's a little offset that one we might want to adjust it um, but a little bit of difference is you know, not necessarily a bad thing okay so uh, I just want to finish those off they're not very uh, nice so let's turn the sim off to give myself a bit more responsive PC and we'll use a smooth, a smooth, a smooth curve tool just to smooth off the ends of these ties there we go and press space and now it looks like we've got buttons you know with a tie holding our uh, piece together and I can see my stay around the other side there uh, having a little bit of a fit so I'm just gonna press space I'll select that Oops and deactivate it for the moment where's deactivate there we go and let it settle back down again and I'll freeze this one and then reactivate and that will give it a chance to settle back to where it needs to be Then if I activate that again it should behave itself in theory which in theory it's not going to do of course <laughs> that would be too easy okay so what's wrong with this one press space and deactivate pattern sewing there we go let's freeze this one don't want to freeze it yet <laughs> press space to let it sim and then let's activate this So it's not happy about something I might have to just give up on that one I'm afraid otherwise I'll be here all day trying to uh, show you all sorts of things that don't work 
uh, or don't work very well on my model, you may well get them to work. Um, yeah, the principle is there, it works for all the other ones, so no reason why it wouldn't. Okay, so what I now need to do is copy these, and if I copy this, Control C, and then Control V, and pop that down somewhere around there, and I want one, two, three, four, I think. Maybe five, let's go for five and delete it if I don't need it. Right, zoom out, not in, yeah, I don't need it. And now we can just fasten these buttons back up again. Uh, so button tool, fasten buttons. So that one to that one, 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 and so on and so forth until we've got them all there. Now press space. Now it's all tied up. So I think that uh, you, you can probably see that my buttons on here are a bit lower. It's just cause these patterns are of differing heights or set at differing places. So I'm just going to move that down and then if I go to my button selection tool I can grab these buttons and move them back up again. Let's press shift there we go and space and that's much more like it okay so that's a bit of detailing I'm sorry about the stays I'm not entirely sure why that's not working quite as it should do uh, but you know stuff happens sometimes you have to make adjustments uh, to your plans um, so what should we do next well I think what we'll do is start to put some colors on this and maybe adjust some bits and bobs to make it look you know perhaps a little bit more a little bit more like it will do uh, at the end so um, yes I'll talk to you in the next section okay so I basically want the overskirt on this to and the bodice to be the same color uh, so I'm just gonna set a color for the bodice let's have a kind of a deepish red there we go and I'm going to add that to my custom colors just to make sure and then click OK and then currently my skirt is on two so I have a skirt uh, but I want a, another one so I'm just going to right click on that and I should be able to copy it and this one I'll name underskirt Oops. There we go, and now I can select this one and give this the same colour. That's that one there. Okay, there we go. So my skirt, I need to apply my material. So there we go, and my skirt, I want to be a kind of blackish colour, or somewhere verging on black. And then I'll add that to my custom colours as well. Uh, this bit I haven't unfrozen for a long time, so let's unfreeze that, and I hope nothing goes pear shaped. There we go, nice. Okay, so I might want some additional colours. So, for example, I might want the stays to be a different colour to, you know, the bodice, and I might want the waist piece to be a different colour, and the trim. So, um, all we need there is an additional material, uh, which we'll perhaps call trims. And I'm going to give that the same dark colour as the, the skirt. I don't want it to have the same um, material properties as the skirt. Just I, I just want it to be a different colour to you know the original. In fact, uh, yes, I just realised I've made a mistake. So I'm going to delete that one and I'm going to copy the bodice because I want it to have the same simulation properties as the bodice. So let's uh, copy that and. We'll call it bodice trim. And we'll give that a uh, or the dark colour that we selected. And now I can apply it to the pieces that I want it to be on. So if I select all of those, whoops, in the pattern tool, I can drag and drop my trim onto there. 
that it should eventually wake up or I can select all my patterns and instead of that I'll just change my fabric down here there we go might be a bit quicker uh, let's select those two and those on the back whoops not that one oh I don't have a piece on the back I better fix that um, I'll fix that between videos yeah no I think we're right for the moment okay yeah so I've got a missing piece here and that's a bit of a problem uh, so I'm going to right click here and copy and mirror paste actually I'm going to try something really brave and right click and symmetric pattern with sewing and hopefully it knows where to sew to it seems to know excellent so let's right click and superimpose over now I'll give these all the same uh, property or material rather fabric there we go and this belt piece I want to be that color as well or that fabric come on there we go yeah now at least it looks like it's uh, as it should be there we go uh, so yeah also these stays down the front let's turn the sim off so it's more responsive I want those to be dark too yeah I suppose I want to make these dark too <laughs> just to yeah it doesn't look right I think uh, just the just these pieces though the bits attaching to the skirt and the uh, the bodice I want to perhaps remain the same there we go okay so um, that's more or less that for marvelous designer uh, we could put it to a more production ready um, particle distance uh, so say somewhere along the lines of five and then let that sim Come on, are you swimming? Yes, you are. There we go. And yeah, I, th I think that's more or less it for now. Uh, what I will do, because uh, this is just the you know the MD end, uh, is I'll take it into Substance uh, to actually give it some you know proper textures. Uh, let me turn that off and turn the sim off. There we go. It might uh, be about right okay so yeah i hope you found that useful i'm sorry there was a few hiccups along the way uh that happens yeah especially with a like a cloth sim kind of thing you know they they're very good and they do a very good job for what they do uh but sometimes you know things go wrong <laughs> okay uh yeah so i hope you found that useful in the next uh, in my next video um my very next video I'm going to texture this in uh, Substance Painter and uh, I hope you'll join me for that one so I'll talk to you soon